Hello guys, so this video is going to be specifically for the OnePlus One and to be precise, it's going to be a kernel for the OnePlus One and when I think about a kernel or flashing a kernel on the OnePlus One or any Nexus device for that matter the only name which comes into my mind is that Franco kernel and guys OnePlus One is the only non-Nexus device which is supported by the Franco kernel so surely it's a great thing and thumbs up to the developer for giving us the opportunity to use the Franco kernel on the OnePlus One so recently the CM2LS OTA for the OnePlus One was released and my expectations were really high from the CM2LS OTA but I won't say that the expectations were met so I had to flash the Franco kernel on the CM12 and my experience was so good that I had to make a video actually I was using the Franco kernel on the OnePlus One since CM11S but I did not make a video because I was just waiting for the lollipop update for the OnePlus One and the lollipop update came so early I mean it came so fast that I almost forgot to make the video anyways let it be and guys flashing the Franco kernel is very easy just boot into TWRP recovery and flash the zip file of the Franco kernel and that's it you are ready to go and before getting into the paid app review uh, I'll give you a brief explanation what you will get with the Franco kernel app so with the CM12S, the Franco Gunner finally supports multi-ROM so thumbs up to the developer for giving us the option of having multi-ROM and all the gestures on the CM12S with the kernel are working like if I draw V, flash will be turned on or if I draw O, the camera will be turned on and I'll say that the gestures are working better with the kernel rather than the stock kernel and the charging time with the kernel was better than I was experiencing on the stock CM12S thumbs up for that too and guys even if you don't buy the paid app like you do not want to buy the app or you do not have the money to buy the app then do not worry even if you just flash the kernel and use it on your daily basis then also the kernel is very very good and you will get most out of your battery juice no issues whatsoever you can use multi rom feature charging time is also good the gestures are working better so thumbs up for that but you can download the franco kernel updater app which is the free app and you can add a widget for that simply go into widget so you can add this performance profiles widget over here and now if you select power saying mode then you will get through a day very very easily and the power saying mode really works and if you want to play games then obviously you can select the performance mode so if you guys do not want to buy the application or if you don't want to play around with the frequencies of the CPU and if you don't want to mess around with your device you are very very good to go on the normal kernel which you will flash through the zip file so now let's get to the paid app which is the best and the best app I have ever used on any phone so let's get to the app and this is the paid app which you can buy from the play store and I'll completely suggest you guys to buy the application because it's surely worth it. So now let's see some of the features of the Franco kernel updater app. It's called the FK updater app but updating the kernel is just like 1% of the complete application. So let's see what are the features into the app. So first thing you'll notice is backup and restore and from here you can simply backup the current kernel which you have. I don't want to backup right now and if we go into CPU manager you can select max CPU frequency I personally use 1574 MHz that's 1.5 GHz actually and if you select this, this option over here it is set on boot it's like every time if you reboot the phone it will be set to 1574 MHz and it won't be changed even after reboot but if you are playing around with voltage control then I'll suggest you guys to leave this as it is and the minimum CPU frequency is selected as 300 MHz so yeah that's pretty good and set on boot too and the CPU governor and conservative is one which I prefer and I use it on the normal basis but you can go with power save mode or interactive mode and interactive mode is the mode on which the CPU works according to the application if the application requires more frequency more CPU frequency then it will give it the maximum frequency possible but if any application requires lower frequency then it will give lower frequency and there won't be any data loss so that's surely a plus point and you can even control the voltages that are given for the particular frequency I do not play around with the voltage control because I just don't want to play around and I'll suggest you guys that if you do not know what you are doing or what you are changing then do not do it and after you know what you are doing then only go forward and there are many other like governor control you can select these many I, I I personally do not know this I won't lie but I do not know about this you can control the GPU obviously max GPU clock you can set it to 200 megahertz or something like that I do not play games so I'll select it to 462 megahertz 
and I'll just go back. And when we go into kernel settings, you can select, you can enable the IO scheduler or you can disable it. And one of the most important thing is that as you can see over here, you can increase the headphones volume gain, microphone volume gain or the speaker volume gain. And that surely works. So as you can see, as soon as I increase it to five, the volume is increased. So that surely works very, very good. And I'm pretty much impressed by this, but I still leave it to zero because I, I, I'm very much happy with zero. But if you want more sound from your device, then you can surely set these options to more number. And I'll suggest you guys to go one by one. Do not just go to 10 or something like that. Go one by one and increase it accordingly. And now this is one of the things which I like. That's the color control and you can select RGB adjustments if you want less amount of red then you can decrease this or if you want less amount of green then you can decrease this and you can set it according to your use so that's surely a plus point and if you want these settings to stay even after reboot then don't forget to select this option I, I, I do not want that so I did not select that and now next thing is performance profile and currently it's selected uh, balance it lowers the CPU and GPU clocks and prevents more than two cores to be online, saving a lot of precious battery juice. Maximum of two cores will be online, uh, that means they will be working and other two cores will not be working, that will surely save a lot of battery juice and it is not at all like laggy. As you can see, it's currently on power sync mode and even if I open the applications, they are opening up pretty fast, no issues whatsoever. So as you can see power saying mode is not like the stock lollipop power saying mode on which all the animations are gone and and everything over there and if we select balance the balance with the performance and the power saying is remained and if we select performance then obviously the performance is favored over anything else as you can see in per app profiles i can select new app profile uh i'll select this as yeah so this is the minimum cpu frequency will be set to 2265 megahertz so this type of app profile should be for a game which you play and which is like very heavy game so let's select application list and i do not have any heavy game right now so let's select clash of clans and now select gaming profile for that so because of this what will happen every time you open clash of clans the cpu cores will be clocked at 2.5 gigahertz the minimum frequency will be 2.2 gigahertz so the gaming experience will be very very good but if you do not want a bad profile for any other application so let's select 960 megahertz over here and let it be this let's save it as normal every time i open twitter application i want the cores to be clocked lower so that my battery juice will be saved and twitter does not require 2.5 gigahertz to be working very fine uh, 1 gigahertz will be okay too so i selected normal for that so let's go back and now if I go into system monitor, as you can see CPU 1 and CPU 2 are online right now and the GPU cores are offline and you can even see what is the RAM usage. So as you can see the network speed is shown. So that's surely a good thing and plus point for that. And you can even see that which application is using RAM and what's the usage of RAM and the CPU frequencies will also be shown and as you can see. 300 megahertz is used for 17 minutes and 33 seconds and, is used for seconds and that's surely a very very good thing because I like to keep a track and now if we go into storage stats that's just normal apps cache battery there are tons of options I cannot go to every option so you can check this app and it's completely worth downloading this app and worth buying this app so I'll completely give thumbs up to Francisco Franco I hope my pronunciation is right so thumbs up to him uh, he is the developer of this kernel and the app, updater app and thank you guys thank you for watching don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already because many such interesting videos will be out very soon so guys one last time thank you for watching